Grab a cup of tea or listen as you go, ladies. This is your hour with Dr. Zoe, your life and relationship coach, with encouragement, on point insight, inspiring guests, health tips, and advice. Dr. Zoe helps busy women keep their mind in the game by redefining your superwoman. You're listening to The Dr. Zoe Show. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Dr. Zoe, and you are a pretty amazing woman who is strong and capable and sometimes tired. Rest, but don't quit. There is strength in the journeys, ladies. So this show is not for fabled beings with capes who have it all together. I've been seeing all these super women memes all over Instagram, which is pretty cool. But this show is for real women who sometimes struggle in the superwoman game. We all struggle sometimes. And so what that means is that this show is for all women. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. Thank you for finding my show and, and tuning in. We talk here about things that matter to busy women all over the world. Every woman has a superpower, and my goal as your life coach is to help you find it, embrace it, and share it with the world. I will encourage you in your struggles. I share some of my own. I'm not struggle-free, ladies. As long as we are alive, there are going to be struggles in your life, in everybody's life. And I like to think of life like my gym experience. Every day, I'm adding weight, not weight in the sense of burdens, but weight in the sense of I'm getting stronger every day. And when I go and look back at the beginning, you know, when I first started weightlifting, again, I have to say, because, you know, I start and stop, have babies, all that kind of fun stuff. I look back and the weight that seemed so heavy to me in the beginning, what was my max, is now like a feather. I lift it so easily. So in our life, the struggles don't go away. But as long as we're focusing on growing, we get stronger. And so I'm here to give you tips and advice to make your life a little easier. We are redefining your superwoman. For those who can't always listen live, you can catch some of my back episodes by subscribing to my podcast on iTunes and pretty much all the podcast places. Just search for The Dr. Zoe Show, Redefining Your Superwoman. If you know a friend who may benefit from some of our topics, please spread the love and share my show. And if you like my show, show me some love with some stars. I think it's four or five, whatever the max is. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Zoe Talks, and listen to episodes there. You can text the word JOIN to 38470 to become part of my tribe and get my free monthly newsletters where you will get freebies and monthly tips, encouragement, and insight right into your inbox. I'm excited to have our guest, Stephanie O'Day, today. She's a New York Times bestselling author and a crockpot specialist. Um, The topic of crockpotting may seem trivial, and uninteresting, right? I mean, it's us making dinner. We have to do that every day. But stay tuned, ladies. We're going to talk not just about delegating your dinners and freeing your life in more ways than just crockpotting, but we're also going to talk about um, basic you know, house management, life management, things for busy woman, women. Uh, she's been a repeat guest on the Rachel Ray Show and on Good Morning America. She's also the author of Housekeeping Guide and four or five other books. You'll tell us about those, Stephanie. Um, One of them is about crock-potting gluten-free, which I think is awesome. She has a wealth of knowledge for busy women, and we're going to dive into it today. And we may follow up with some real talk. So next up, health tips. Remember, your body and your mind are intimately connected. You can't have health in one without health in the other, and that is why I have a health tip segment. Healthy looks different on everybody, so stop those comparisons, ladies. And you know, I spend time researching various health trends, fitness things um, to help you on your health journey. And so today, I don't know about you women, but I think that most of us struggle with belly fat, especially after a certain age. I know I do, and I'm, I'm in pretty great shape because I work hard at it. It didn't just happen. Um, but what I notice is that when I slack a little bit, I notice it in my belly first. I can go from a six-pack to a three-pack to a no-pack anywhere, blubber belly in the space, what seems to me days, probably weeks, just depending on how t- on top of the game I am. So first, I want to talk about the fact that having a strong core is not just about vanity, 
Let's be honest, there's some vanity in there. It's a part of it. But as you age, having a strong core becomes even more important. Having a strong ab structure actually allows you to breathe deeper, allowing for better oxygen throughout your body, oxygen flow. A strong core alleviates back issues. It helps with posture. It reduces your chance of injury when you're working out. So it's important. Focus on your core. So what are some tips for developing and maintaining a strong core? First of all, it doesn't have to be a big focus, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that with your exercise uh, regime. But generally, if you're doing two to three strength or weight sessions a week, you don't have to do it at the gym, you can do it at home. Um, and then for fat melting cardio, all you need to do is your weight in minutes. This one is such a great tip. So if you're 145 pounds, you have to do 145 minutes of cardio a week. However it fits into your schedule, you can break it up 60 minutes this day, 45 minutes this day, 40 minutes on another day, whatever works in your schedule. And I think that's so good because, okay, say you have 50 pounds to lose, you're 200 pounds. You want to get down to 150. So that means when you get to your target weight, you just lost 50 minutes of exercise that you have to do every week to maintain. So that's pretty cool. Um, another tip is green tea. You guys know I love my green tea. You might have heard my green tea commercials. Um, but multiple studies show that EGCG, an antioxidant in green tea, helps boost your metabolism and may specifically target that abdominal fat. Uh, most of the research did use high doses of green tea, so that's a disclaimer. But even if you can't guzzle gallons of it, any amount is beneficial. Another tip is increasing sleep. We've talked about that on one of my shows. I did a whole health segment on, on sleep. But a 2012 study showed that people who are sleep deprived have subcutaneous fat cells, the ones right below your skin, that were more insulin resistant, which of course can lead to weight gain. Another tip, when you do your abs, which you should do daily, think about all planes of motion, not just crunches, not just straight sit-ups. Your abs are actually made of six groups of muscles. If all you do is straight crunches or sit-ups, number one, you're not um, working all the muscles equally, um, and you're, you're gonna, not going to get the definition that you really want. So you want to try crunches, reverse crunches. You want to hit your sagittal plane. You can stand, do standing side bends for your frontal, chops or twists for transverse um, rotational action. Um, basically, you just want to kind of move side to side as you're doing your push-ups. The ab wheel, I love. That's the only, only ab machine or ab um utensil, I guess you can, I don't know what you call it. But anyway, it's the only thing that I think works at all. And it's because you're using your body weight. And if you use that, you don't want to just go straight. Once again, you want to go side to side um, and knee ups as well. So, oh, planks, 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 ladies. Planks are so important because they work that whole core. You want to aim to work up to holding your plank for a minute. Once you can do this, and if it takes you a month to do this, that's fine. But once you can do this, you want to do something called a vacuum during your plank. You suck in your stomach like you're trying to button a tight pair of jeans, hold it for three seconds, relax for three seconds, and then repeat the whole time you're doing the plank. Another tip is reducing fine carbs. We know that people who eat whole foods have 10% less visceral fat than those who don't. And I've just noticed that in my life, that when I switched to a whole foods diet, I leaned out without even paying attention to how much I was eating. So if it's cocktail dress or bikini time, ginger, peppermint, and chamomile, that kind of cocktail, uh, seems to aid in digestion and reduce bloating. So you want to kind of try to take those, those three together if you need a little bit of a quick fix. So I want you to recognize that crunch or ab workouts will not get rid of belly fat, right? It's the cardio and our eating. So we have to really think of it holistically. And that's why I talk about those machines. If you have those ab machines, forget them. Just use your body weight. You can do it at home. Just throw them away or don't buy them to begin with, except for the, the wheel. And the wheel, of course, like I said, is awesome. So almost everybody has a body structure that will reveal a six or four pack. Not everyone even has a body structure to reveal a six pack, by the way. But everyone has a body structure, most people, that will reveal a four or six pack. It's just covered in fat. So if you follow the 10% rule to sculpt the abs, 
once you've removed the fat, it's really helpful. So the 10% rule is that you spend the majority of your workouts focusing on the rest of your body. Don't focus on your abs. And only 10% of your time focusing on abs. So if you work for an hour or work out for an hour, only six minutes of, six minutes of it should be on abs. The rest on overall strength and cardio. I never do abs during my workouts. I do five minutes of abs every night at my bedside before I hop into bed, right after my 42 push-ups, because that's how old I am. Remember pushing up your age, ladies? And that probably equals out to about 10%, which is pretty easy. Last but not least, don't be afraid to push yourself just a little. Just because you've had a kid or five, in my case, doesn't mean you have to give up on having killer abs. Start small, give yourself grace, build up, and realize that it has to be a holistic approach. Diet, cardio, and strength training. So those are my ab tips, ladies. Go kill them. Next up, Stephanie O'Day, New York Times best-selling author and self-proclaimed crockpot lady. Um, and I would just like to add Superwoman as well. She's a self-made stay-at-home mom, and I know she has a wealth of information to give us. I'm going to say a quick hi before we have to go on break. <laughs> hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for having me. This is wonderful. And while you're talking, I find myself like tightening my core and trying to have better posture. So thank you for that. <laughs> awesome. You're welcome. Okay, so we are going to be sharing with everybody in just a minute. We will be back. People ask me, how do you have so much energy? I am not a coffee drinker, but I love the benefits of matcha green tea. More antioxidants than coffee and a smooth energy, not the jittery kind that lasts me all day long. Perfect for you super moms too. I have searched the world over for that perfect matcha for my smoothies and I have found it at Kiss Me Organics. You can get it too at kissmeorganics.com. Enter the promo code Dr. Zoe, D R Z O E, for 10% off and free shipping. Experience the smooth, healthy, organic energy of matcha green tea. KissMeOrganics.com. Hi, welcome back. This is Dr. Zoe, and I'm here with my guest, Stephanie O'Day, New York Times bestselling author and self proclaimed crockpot lady, although I'm saying she's a superwoman. Uh, she's a self made stay at home mom, and I know she has a wealth of information to give us. So, Stephanie, welcome again, and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you first started crockpotting and making your way to crockpotting fame. <laughs> You bet. Thank you for having me. And sure. Also, I love it that you're using um, crock potting correctly, oh. which is a verb. So I, I greatly appreciate that. Awesome. Good to know. <laughs> that's what it, that is definitely what it is. So um, the funny thing is I am not a foodie type person. I don't like cooking. I don't like the act of cooking. Um, but when I was engaged, I thought perhaps I should learn to be a little bit more domestic. So I had asked my mom for a crock pot, a pasta machine, and a food dehydrator. Uh -huh. And um, the pasta machine left me with mushy gross pasta, and the food dehydrator, it took way too long to make beef jerky. But I really liked that crock pot. And so I started using it um, when my husband and I were newlyweds, and we were out of the house working all day long, and it was just so nice to come home at the end of a long work day to a fully cooked meal and it also really helped us stick to our grocery budget. We mm. weren't ordering takeout as often. We weren't going out to dinner because dinner was already waiting for us. And then fast forward to when I had children of my own, I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to be the kind of mom who shops and makes gourmet meals and learns how to do all of these things. But my kids are wonderful. I love them to death. But um, they were kind of cranky between 4 and 6 p.m., and it honestly just, it wasn't safe to be chopping onions and standing over the stove and poking at things in the oven. So I learned quickly that if we were going to have dinner on the table, I needed to get it done in the morning while I'm still heavily caffeinated and coherent and the kids are in good moods. And so that's really why I really sort of fell in love with my slow cooker and started using it an awful, awful lot. Thank you for that. Well, you know, I am somebody who's never used a dehydrator. I've never 
made pasta from scratch or used a pasta machine, whatever. So I'm ca- I'm even a couple steps below <laughs> you, but I do have a crock pot and I do have a what's a pressure cooker. Yeah, which I love. Yes. The pressure cooker is really trendy right now. Uh-huh. I'm not there yet. I'm not quite that trendy, but um, <laughs> I'll tell you, there's something pretty magical about putting everything into the slow cooker and, and pushing a button mm-hmm. and walking away. And and that is really what I like. I like the kind of dump and go meals. And then the, the way I started writing on the internet and the way the cookbooks came about was I had gone back to work after my second child was um, a little shy of two years old. Mm-hmm. And um, I was lucky because she could come to work with me. I was running preschool centers, oh. but she kept getting sick, and I didn't know what it was. So I just assumed it was daycare germs. So I quit, and um, that wasn't good because we sort of needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I needed to find a legitimate way to work from home. And so I wanted to learn how to blog, and um, and I knew just from some researching that um, recipe sites were really um, highly ranked in Google because you're giving people what they're searching for. Mm-hmm. But again, I'm not a regular cook. I just use my crock pot. So that's how that all came about. And um, and so I'm, I'm lucky that I get to do what I do and still be home with the kids. And then just so you know and your listeners know, um, my daughter's totally fine now. We found out that she had celiac, which is a gluten intolerance, which of course now is kind of commonplace and mm-hmm. everyone knows about. But back in 2006, it really wasn't um, in everyday vernacular. So it sort of threw me for a loop. And honestly, there's no easier way to cook from scratch than, again, to plop it all into the slow cooker and, and push that button and walk away. So. That's a great story. And so you made it from crock potting in your kitchen for convenience to the Rachel Ray show and Good Morning America. And how many books do you have out? I have um, four cookbooks mm-hmm. and um, I have a housekeeping guide for moms that I've written also. Because I started to realize that people were following me for the crock pot recipes and they were really helpful. And, um, and in that, it's wonderful. It, and you have the same thing. You know that somehow, somewhere, you're touching the lives of women from all over the world. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to sort of simplify kind of the, the housekeeping aspect that, in general, we want the dinner on the table right. and the beds made every day and the kitchen somewhat clean, um, but in, in a streamlined way. Um, we don't want to spend all day, every day doing all these things. And so the same way I like that I can throw everything in the crock pot and push a button, and so you've got this huge, nice, hearty meal, which really only took 10 to 15 minutes to prepare. I wanted to find a way to do that with um, kind of the daily chores and the household tasks. That's great, and we'll talk a little bit about that that part, but I want to s- stick to the crock potting. So for women like me, who I pull my crock pot out maybe once or twice a month, and when I do, and like you said, I do it in the morning, I throw my stuff in, by the end of the day when dinner's ready, I feel so good. I'm like, oh, I should do that more often. But then it kind of just goes back up into my cabinet and I forget about it till, you know, the next time I do it. And I'm like, why don't I do this? So what are the what are the slow cooking basics and how can you help someone like me who does it, you know, sometimes or women who've never used it at all? Sure. So one really good thing that the slow cooker sort of forces you to do mm-hmm. is to meal plan. Mm. And if you're super busy, the idea of planning doesn't sound fun at all. You That's know, my problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't have time to plan. Right. But, but chances are, and um, if you sat down with your family and you just started having them name out meals, chances are the recipes and the food that you eat on a monthly baselet, uh, basis for dinner uh-huh. is kind of similar. Pretty much everyone has a spaghetti night. Everyone has some sort of pasta night, um, uh, a beef stew, right. um, roasted chicken. So if you just went through the basics and if you made a standard meal plan for two weeks and then just repeated it, you've got a month's worth of meals there. Hmm. And then um, grocery shopping wise, I like to have um, the meat in the house, in the freezer, 
ready to go. So then in the morning, you're you're throwing that in with whatever canned pantry staples, um, barbecue sauce, canned beans, corn, that type of thing. So it really forces you to plan ahead a little bit, but that tiny bit of planning ahead and knowing that the food's already in the house really alleviates a lot of stress. And then also making a menu and sticking with it, kids are good at that. They are happy to look at the calendar and be like, oh, it's a uh, macaroni oh. and cheese night or, or whatever it is and, and stick to it. For some reason, kids don't argue with lists and, and written rules and it's just probably from school. It's like, oh, it's 10 o'clock, it's recess. And, and so they just go with it. Oh, that is such a good idea because I don't meal plan. I just buy what looks good or I kind of buy regular stuff. We were just talking about Trader Joe's, right? That's my place, my choice for shopping usually. And then I just kind of think about it in the middle of the day usually and I'm throwing whatever I can throw together. So what you're saying is you need to and, you know, maybe you guys are on top of it. I need to get on top of it. Pick a day maybe and sit down and meal plan. Do you have meal plans on any of your sites or in your books? I do. So okay. I do. So I have ready to go um, Monday through Friday meal plans. I've got 14 different varieties. So if you happen to be vegan awesome. or gluten-free, casein-free, which is dairy-free, mm-hmm. um, they're there. So I, I've tried to make up a meal plan for each um, variety. But then I also have dump and go recipes, mm-hmm. which are freezer meals. I don't know if you've ever gotten into that. No. But that's kind of a nice <laughs> feeling that you have 30 meals ready to go in your freezer. Is that where so you make them with a group of people? Dump the bag into the slow cooker. So is that where you make them by yourself or you make them with a group of people or, or something? Sure. So I make them by myself. Uh huh. Um, but you certainly can split it with a girlfriend if you wanted to do that. And so it's things like like going to Costco or Sam's Club and you're buying your meat in bulk. Uh huh. Chances are because the packaging is already so big. Chances are you're breaking it up into Ziplocs anyway. So while you're doing that, then add the rest of the ingredients to the Ziploc so it's all ready to go in one bag. And then in the morning, so I usually thumb overnight in the refrigerator, and then in the morning I just squeeze out the bag and push the button and walk away. So things like a can of diced tomatoes and a sliced onion and that kind of thing are already in the bag, so you don't have to think about it. And you know that if you're already pulling out a chopping board to cut up an onion, if you have to chop up six, whatever, the cutting board's already out, you might as well just do it. Oh my goodness. I'm sitting here with my (laughs) mouth open like, okay, I've been doing this mom thing, parenting thing for 16 years, and I haven't done this yet. (laughs) I'm thinking, why don't I do this? And I've heard... Obviously, what you're doing works for you, so I'm certainly not going to try and change you in any way. (laughs) No, I totally need to change. (laughs) I think it could alleviate a bit of stress. And then also, your kids are old enough that they can help with this big time. Good point. We are going to get out some Ziploc bags this weekend, and we are going to be chopping <laughs> and dicing. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Good information. And so do you think you should just keep a crock pot on your counter? That's question number one. And then question number two, for someone who doesn't have any of this at all, which one should they get? How do they know? Do they do a crock pot? Do they do a pressure cooker? What, what do you suggest? Sure. So as far as keeping it out on your countertop, that's a total personal thing. (laughs) So I happen to be in a house that has a kitchen from 1948. Oh, wow. And I still don't have right now a dishwasher or a garbage disposal because um, I told my husband, I don't want him to put those things in. I want a brand new kitchen. So I'd rather just wait (laughs) and get what I want. So for right now, everything, my counter's not big enough, but eventually it will be. Um, so, so you do what's right for you, but then, um, uh, as far as what type, uh-huh. um, a six quart, a six quart oval is the most common, and that's what most slow cooker recipes are written for, and that's okay. what I recommend. And then I go back and forth in my wording between crock pot and slow cooker. So crock pot is a name brand, oh. and it's by Jarden Consumer Electrics. Um, and then the colloquial term is slow cooker. And um, the so they're the same thing. I'm sorry. Go so ahead. they're the same thing. So. So Crock-Pot is a brand name for right. like Kleenex and tissues. So. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> so um, so the one that I use the most is called
called um, the Ninja Cooking System, and it's by the the Ninja people who have the blenders. I have the blender, the yeah, thing. yeah. Okay. So I did their infomercial and really liked it. But even if I didn't do their infomercial, I've used now so many that I still really, really like that one the best. And it's because in it you can um, it has a stovetop setting and an oven setting. So if you were like wanting to brown your meat before slow cooking, you could do it all right in that pot and then flip it over to slow cooker. Wow. Or if you didn't get your act together early enough in the morning because you don't have four or eight hours now to cook. That would be me. (laughs) Use a slow cooker recipe, but put it on that oven setting and it'll cook as high as 425 degrees. So really I look at it as kind of a kitchen in a pot. And, and so I really like that one. But the, the drawback is it's more expensive. It runs around 179 or so. And, um, and so if that isn't appealing, the other one that I really like is the Hamilton Beach Set and Forget. And that runs about $49 on Amazon. But one thing I would highly recommend is to make sure it's programmable. And okay. so that way, if you're out of the house all day, you don't need to worry that your pot is still on. This way you can set the timer for your six hour chicken or eight hours or whatever, and it'll flip down to a warm or a buffet setting. And so your food won't continue to cook, but it'll stay at a hot and nice um, warm temperature for you. And that'll last up to a good 20 hours on that warm setting. So just for safety reasons, I would recommend that programmable if you're going to be out of the house all day. Wow, great tips. Yes, we don't want to burn up the house. We're trying to make things easier, not harder, but great (laughs) tips. I am going to go look for that ninja. So if you're just listening, we are talking with Stephanie O'Day. She's giving us some amazing crock potting tips. I feel kind of ignorant. Many of you may know this stuff, but I'm like, why haven't I thought about this? Um, Stephanie, how can, we're getting ready to go on break, but how can people get a hold of you? Sure. So, um, the slow cooking website is a year of slow mm-hmm. And in that from the, there's a drop down menu and you can see my books, um, the cookers that I personally recommend and use. And then also the meal plans and that dump and go ebook are all in there also. And I'm happy. You can email me through the site whenever you want with questions. Best part of my day is answering emails so, <laughs> and answering questions. I love it. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So we will be back in just a minute. You're listening to The Dr. Zoe Show with my guest, Stephanie O'Day. People ask me, how do you have so much energy? I am not a coffee drinker, but I love the benefits of matcha green tea. More antioxidants than coffee and a smooth energy, not the jittery kind that lasts me all day long. Perfect for you super moms too. I have searched the world over for that perfect matcha for my smoothies and I have found it at Kiss Me Organics. You can get it too at kissmeorganics.com. Enter the promo code Dr. Zoe, D R Z O E, for 10% off and free shipping. Experience the smooth, healthy, organic energy of matcha green tea. KissMeOrganics.com. Hi, you are back listening to the Dr. Zoe show, and we are talking with my guest, Stephanie O'Day. She's kind of blown me away, and I'm a little embarrassed about it because I've been cooking, well, I've been cooking for a long time, but for my family for 16 years, and I'm realizing I totally need to streamline this process. I'm making it harder on myself. So she gave us some good tips, and so one question I have for you, Stephanie, do you still crock pot every day? So not every day right now and it's mostly because I don't want to cook every day Mm -hmm. so I try to um to kind of make big batches of food and then we'll repurpose the leftovers so like um what's today today's Tuesday so on Sunday we had a brisket and then um I chopped it up and used leftovers for fried rice while Mm. you can make fried rice in the slow cooker I did it on the stovetop um and that kind of thing um Today we're going to have a lentil stew, and I know that will last for two nights, Mm -hmm. those type of things. Um, My kids are older now. They are 15, 12, and Mm 7, and even though I try to limit our after-school activities, those evening hours are still kind of a rush, Sure. and I think a lot of times women sort of have this fantasy where we're all going to sit down at dinner at 6 o'clock, and we're going to say grace and talk about our day. And um, in 
real life, that just doesn't happen as often as you would hope. Mm -hmm. In real life, there's soccer practice and swim lessons and clarinet and uh, back to school night and parent teacher conferences and all of these things that happen in those kind of precious evening hours. So what's nice about using the slow cooker is even if we're not all home physically at six o'clock, mm -hmm. we're eating the same food and it's staying hot and fresh for us. So if I've got somebody home at 445 and they're starving, I will feed them then. And then when my husband comes home later in the seven o'clock hour, he's starving. Dinner is still there ready. So we're not continuously dirtying up the kitchen and like trying to reinvent new food, which I think sometimes happens. And then I also think a lot of times that frantic feeling has people um, in the drive through lane. Right. Which, as we all know, isn't healthy in the long term um, to use uh, very often. It's not healthy. And when you were talking about the Ninja and the price of the Ninja, like 179 I was thinking, okay, that's like a couple of times just taking my family to, you know, even fast food. <laughs> I take them to Chipotle. It's like $60. <laughs> right. So right. it's right. definitely yeah. worth it. So I just had a question from a listener. Let me see if I can get it back real quickly. She said the question, she said, I have the distinct inability to pre-plan. I go to the grocery store, I try to buy staples, I try to think ahead of what I might want to have, but inevitably I end up at the grocery store at least once every day and sometimes twice. No exaggeration, please help. Sure, so, so my suggestion um, would probably be to buy one um, pre-made meal plan so you can see how the grocery list is planned out. Mm -hmm. So for the, it, um, the grocery list is in there. So it has all of your meat separate, all of your pantry staples separated, even your sauces and your spices and your condiments. Mm -hmm. So you know then all of your dinners for an entire week are in that one grocery trip. That said, if you need cereal or bananas or milk, that is something that, that here and there you will probably end up going to the store for, but it's not kind of that frantic dinner time rush. At least then in that way, you know all of the food for dinner is in the house. And for some reason, we're pretty good at remembering to get bananas, milk, eggs, um, but not necessarily lentils or something right. like that. <laughs> that is the worst thing is when I go to the grocery store to get something like lentils and I end up coming home with $200 and I forgot $200 worth of groceries and I forgot my lentils. Yes. That will happen to me despite <laughs> my list and all that I stuff. I don't know why I have lentils in my brain today, so I think <laughs> I've talked about them four times. Sorry. Because you're having <laughs> lentil soup <laughs> for dinner tonight. So you told me that you actually cook your holiday meals in the crock pot. Do you have 20 crock pots? How do you do that? Sure. So I, I do. I have quite a few in the house. I've got 14 wow. right now in the house. And I'm happy to line my, my countertops with, um, with them. So let's see. So Thanksgiving's coming up, and we'll host um, anywhere between 24 and 30 people. And we will still roast the turkey in mm -hmm. the oven. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of the, the easy part of Thanksgiving. The right. difficult part of Thanksgiving is getting all of your side dishes going and, and you're trying to figure out oven space and stovetop space. So um, I'll put the stuffing and the mashed potatoes and the cranberry sauce and the candied sweet potatoes and the green bean casserole and all of the, the staple side dishes in slow cookers. And I put them on early in the morning. And it's awesome because then... I'm done. I can mop the kitchen and shove everybody out and can sit on the couch and have a glass of wine and enjoy my company when they arrive rather than constantly fussing and, and being in the kitchen. So I like I like the fact that the cookers are doing their thing and when the food is done, it just stays on warm and then um, I can enjoy my guests. I love that. I am going to make a commitment to try to use my slow cook, well, pressure cooker, whatever I have for the holidays this year. I'm planning on hosting, so I'm going to try it. I am going to try it. That is great. So I wanted to kind of change uh, the topic a little bit to house management, quote, you know, slash life management. You know, I told you that my listeners are busy women. We sometimes struggle trying to, to get it all together. So how do we women and you wrote a book about this, obviously. How do we women set ourselves up for failure? 
Sure. I think we set ourselves up for failure by thinking that everything needs to be perfect mm-hmm. and um, resemble Real Simple Magazine or what Martha Stewart tells us to do or um, now with Pinterest and the Howes app and, and all of those things. And that's not real life. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you watch like Home and Garden TV and you see kind of the reveal at the end of the show. But even like the knickknacks that they put out, they're from Crate and Barrel or something. They're not real life. Right. So, I mean, in real life, you have paperwork that's coming home from school. You've got mail. You've got coffee cups and, and random things um, throughout your house. So, I think knowing that you're never going to be like something out of a magazine um, is important. And then I also think streamlining and, and, and realizing that um, there's – clean and then they're spotless and for me clean is I want to know that the house is company ready within about 20 to 30 minutes and so that means if you run into someone at the grocery store and you're like wow we should get together for coffee you can go home and and in that time you can tidy up that front area if necessary and and you can enjoy having people come over so um, I have seven chores that I try to do on a daily basis and what I write about in the book. And really, if you do these chores, Mm -hmm. the house is is pretty much always ready Um, and and people can pop in. by, by pop in, I think in this day and age, everyone realizes you should at least text before of you course, come over. Of course, yeah. <laughs> no one can pop in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Seinfeld, so it's okay. To... <laughs> but still, sometimes people will give you five minutes notice, and you're like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. You're coming now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so one thing I really try and instill in my kids and with readers, and you would be surprised at how much um, uh, flack I get for it, is to make your bed as soon as you get out of bed in the morning. Like, don't even think about it. So it's just a complete and total habit. The alarm goes off, you turn it off, you climb out of bed. Before you even go to the bathroom, you've made the bed. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if your bed is really, really fussy and you have 75 pillows, then that's a problem. Maybe you should streamline and just have a sheet and a comforter and your regular Mm -hmm. pillows. So it doesn't need to be hotel-ish. It needs to be comfortable for you and your family. Um, I also ask, um, especially people with families, to try and do a complete load of laundry a day. And that's um, wash, dry, fold, and put away. Mm -hmm. And if you do a little bit every day, it doesn't become an insurmountable task where all of a sudden on a Sunday you can't leave the house because you have 14 baskets of laundry that you need to get through. Right, And that kind of thing. Um, I like all of the garbage cans to be emptied every single day, no matter what. Um, it keeps uh, the bathrooms cleaner, it keeps the kitchen cleaner, that type of thing. Um, keeping your kitchen sink empty. Um, in this particular house, I don't even have a dishwasher, so I'm kind of um, always washing dishes, but then the reason I have three kids is they should be helping and they should be washing their dishes also. And um, I don't know about you, but if you have a clean sink and somebody puts a peanut butter knife in the sink, all of a sudden, it's like open season for the rest of the world to put their stuff in the sink. Yes. So if you just take the time <laughs> to wash the peanut butter off the freaking knife, <laughs> it'll be fine. So that, so is... that kind of stuff is a pet peeve of mine, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> That is so true. I've noticed that. Okay, so how many did you list? So uh, make your bed in the morning as soon as you get up. Empty the trash cans. Laundry. Do one uh, load of laundry a day. Yeah, and um, and uh, keeping your kitchen sink empty. So then another one super quick mm-hmm. is um, wiping down your bathroom countertops. So, so keep Clorox wipes or Lysol wipes or something in the bathroom and then just just wipe it down your your countertop um, with a wipey every day. Okay. Gets the kids in a good habit to get all the toothpaste goobers out of the sink mm-hmm. and that type of thing. Um, in general, whatever you get out, you need to put away, and you have to pay attention to yourself along with the kids. But mm-hmm. if the kitchen table is covered with homework stuff, when homework is over, it needs to get put away. Those type of things. If you're in the middle of playing with Legos or something and it's a huge farm and you worked really hard on it, sure. But pick a day 
in the next few where you know it's going to get put away Mm -hmm. rather than just continuously being out. And then the last one that is super easy and probably packs the biggest punch, and if you're going to only do one chore, it would be this one I would um, recommend, and that's to set a timer, and for 10 minutes straight, Uh, everyone in the family cleans up. So for your house, you've got five kids. Four in the home, yeah. Okay, yeah. So so then there's six of you. So that's an hour's worth of cleaning that can happen in that 10 minutes if everyone is cleaning for those 10 minutes. So, so everybody, it adds up. Everybody all at the same time, 10 minutes. And then you delegate like who does what? Like you're going to be over here, you're going to be over here. Okay. If that's what works for you, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Give them zones. Okay, I love it. I love it. So tell me, what is prom? <laughs> so um, this is funny. <laughs> so prom is my um, decluttering acronym. Uh-huh. So it's purge, remove, organize, and maintain. Okay. And the fact is, the more stuff you have, the harder it is to keep it clean. So um, less is definitely better when it comes to the amount of stuff in your house. And I love that you say that. Because they all want to collect things. Yes. And for a little while, my oldest thought she was going to collect gum wrappers. And I'm like, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> That's somebody else's house. Or when you grow up, you can collect all the gum wrappers. When you move out, collect all the gum wrappers you want. But in my house, it's like that. I love that. It's funny that you said that because at least once a year, I decide I'm going to be a minimalist, right? But nobody else in my house is on board with that. So that makes it really difficult. And then I kind of give up too. But... That, that was a really good point. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and things, um, especially little kids, they create so much paper product, mm-hmm. every scrap of paper that they've written their name on and that kind of stuff. You do not have to keep all of this. You don't need to keep most of the stuff that comes home from school. If it's a great, wonderful piece of art, sure, frame it, hang it, take a picture of it, scan it, but um, don't beat yourself up for trying to keep your house um, clutter free. So purge, remove, what's the O? Organize. Organize and... And then then maintain. Maintain. So when would you do the purge, removing, and organizing? Is that something you do daily? Is that something you do... Like, how how would you suggest someone who's overwhelmed get started? In the... um, So the name of the housekeeping book is Totally Together, Shortcuts to an Organized Life. Mm -hmm. So, and it's it's kind of a daily uh, planner. I'm actually separated by weeks. And then I also have printable calendar pages on the website okay but what's interesting is the chores are already inputted for you so you don't have to think about it so all of a sudden it's like okay today we're gonna prom the kitchen pantry or today we're gonna prom your purse and, mm. and stuff like that so it's it goes through the cycles there are times when um women have more of that like nesting mode kind of happening yeah when you have that I feel like you should harness it and just go for it and do as much as you as you can because chances are you're gonna have a dry spell for quite a while so (laughs) so so realize that there's waves of things and and that's okay um and don't think that if you're proming the playroom today but you didn't prom the master bedroom there's something wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you it's not it's not any sort of competition um but chances are you'll be calmer with um, less stuff, um, depending on what you believe in. Some people think that things provide like a vibration and some people like can feel the noise Mm -hmm. and then they're calmed down when it's released. Um, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if scientifically there's any merit to it, but I think psychologically it is helpful if um, you're not completely surrounded by clutter. That's what I was going to say. I don't know about the vibration part. It makes sense. But what I do know is that research has shown that when your house is in order, when things are cleaner, not as messy, we do feel calmer. We do feel more focused even because the mess actually distracts our brain. And so, yeah, it it definitely is true. I just got a text from a viewer she said, this is no joke. I'm listening to the show and trying to make a salad dressing I love because I'm, multi- I'm a multitasking super mom and I don't have the Dijon mustard it calls for. I have a blender full of chopped apples and walnuts and now I can't even make it. And I'm going to have to go to the store and get it. I'm totally buying. Oh, I just lost it because somebody else. <laughs> gave me that. Okay, she so said, I'm totally buying your meal plan. Home, do you have mustard powder? 
Because you can throw mustard powder into your blender with just a tiny bit of olive oil. Ooh. If that'll work. Mustard powder and know. olive oil. Awesome. That's a great, great tip. But she said, I'm totally buying that meal planning thing now. <laughs> your meal planning thing. What is it called again? Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. good. What, one nice thing about um, cooking regularly and getting into the hang of cooking mm -hmm. is you'll start to figure out what pantry staples naturally go well together. And so then you'll start to make up your own menus and your own dinners based on what you already have in the pantry and then it'll keep you from going to the store and that kind of stuff. But that comes with time and it mm -hmm. comes from following recipes for a while and being like, oh, every time she says brown sugar, she says soy sauce. Oh, whoa, they taste like teriyaki sauce. And, and, and just kind of um, keeping that in your brain. That's a good one. What I do in my kitchen, I have the Amazon Echo, I think it's called, Alexa. And I leave, she's in my kitchen, and as soon as I realize I run out of something, I just tell her, Alexa, add this to my shopping list, which oh, is good, nice. and it helps a lot. And the other thing, though, is my kids do it, too. So I'll get to the store, and I'll have, like, ice cream on my shopping list ten times. <laughs> but it okay, helps. so how does that work, then? You have an app on your phone that has the grocery list in it? Yeah, so you just tell Alexa. Now, Alexa can also buy stuff from you for Amazon. So let's say it's something you usually get from Amazon. You can just say, Alexa, reorder my paper towels or reorder this. But then the other thing she does is, is, is if you say, add you know, Dijon mustard to my shopping list, it goes to your cell phone. So then when you're at the um, grocery store, you can pull up your Alexa app or Amazon Echo. I, I don't remember. I think it's called the Alexa app. And then all of your lists are right there. And you don't have to stop. You don't have to write anything down. You just speak it. The second you realize oh, it. Oh, that's neat. Okay. Yes. I all love right. it. And that's, that's why I keep her in my kitchen. Cool. <laughs> well, no, I like that because especially if your hands are full or if you're in the middle of doing things, right. you have an idea and then you think to yourself, oh, I should write it down. But by the time you think, oh, I should write it down, it's already like left your brain. It's lost. So um, <laughs> I like that idea a lot. Yes, and I get a lot of those lost things. The older I get and the busier my life gets, I know many women do. Um, so yes, that's why I love my Alexa, because it's not even shopping stuff. I tell her to do everything. She adds things to my calendar. She she helps me a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> my my personal assistant. Wow. Thank you, Stephanie. This has been such a wonderful conversation. Is there anything... Uh, else that you can think of that you would add for the struggling mom, whether it's crock potting stuff or life management. And then if you can tell us again where we can get all your stuff. I'm sure it's on Amazon, right? You can just tell your Alexa, order Stephanie O'Day's <laughs> stuff. <laughs> um, I think what you were talking about in the beginning mm -hmm. of how um, like your physical well-being is tied into your, your mental well-being yes. is important. And I think um, I think just women try to do everything so well and so perfectly that sometimes they beat themselves up if, mm -hmm. it, if it doesn't go the way they thought it would in their head. Right. So even when it comes to cooking, if their recipe doesn't look like the way it was supposed to on Pinterest, they think it was a fail. Well, I don't know if it was a fail. If you ate it and your kids ate it, to me, that's not a fail. That's a win. That's, yeah. Okay. So I'm not the best food photographer, but, but that's okay and and I think um realizing that um wait I don't know there's some quote was it like 90% is just showing up and and just mm. doing it of, of just going through the motions um is very important I think self-care is important and um and cutting yourself a lot of slack because you are not perfect there is no such thing and I think um in this sort of Instagrammy filtered society that we're in right now um, we're measuring that kind of stuff and, and that's not fair it's not that's and not we fair. compare yeah. ourselves to the Pinterest or the Instagram woman that doesn't even exist she doesn't and so yes you're so right you have to give yourself some slack and when I talk to women about beginning any new thing in their life whether it's a passion or a program or something they're starting I always say this is, is what your expectation should be. It should suck the first time you do it. Let's just go right there, right? Because if that's the expectation you have, instead of it should be perfect, and then when it's not perfect or it's not good enough, then we quit or we lose our motivation. No, it's new. 
everybody <laughs> has to start somewhere. So if you're starting the crock potting deal, and I'm totally going to get on this. I'm going to let you guys know how this goes for me. <laughs> I'm going to start with the meal planning. I'm going to uh, go get my crock pot out today. But whatever you're starting with, whatever program you're trying to implement in your life to help yourself, just know that in the beginning, it might suck. It takes time for you to work it out. It takes time for you to come to your, you know, quote, perfection, which doesn't exist. Um, but you do have to give yourself some grace in that. Thank you, Stephanie. This has been so much fun. So we can find you on Facebook and at Stephanie O'Day? Yes. So O'Day is O-D-E-A. But if you go to a year of slowcooking.com, okay. everything's all linked in there in a really nice package that my web designer put together. So, <laughs> so cool. Speaking of web designer, I'm delegate. Not, I'm not techie, but I can't do crock pots. That's great. Of course you can. Yeah. So speaking of, of, of that, delegate, delegate, delegate. Um, okay. So you can find Stephanie at Stephanie O'Day, S-T-E-P-H? Yes. A-N-I-E-O-D-E-A.com -E 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 or a year of slow cooking. Right. On her website, a year of slow cooking dot com. And she has some groups also um, on Facebook. And uh, this has been fantastic. So thank you so much, Stephanie. I look forward to connecting you, connecting with you on social media. I know, you know, people are listening and getting excited. You're motivating everybody to get out their their crock pots. So I just really appreciate you coming today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So this is the Dr. Zoe show. And if you are just tuning in, we were just here with Stephanie O'Day. You can listen to our back episodes on iTunes. Um, they will be available in a week or two. And you can tune in next week and every Tuesday from 12 to 1 Pacific, 3 to 4 Eastern at LA Radio Now. And as I said, you can check out the, the reruns on iTunes, Google Play, Lipson, YouTube, where I am your life and relationship coach. I help sometimes struggling superwomen keep your mind in the game by redefining your superwoman. Connect with me at drzoeshaw.com or any of my social medias at the handle Dr. Zoe Shaw. Join my free newsletter and get a copy of 30 Minute Life Transformation, The Secret to Getting Stuff Done by texting the word JOIN to 38470. I look forward to speaking with you wonderful ladies on social media after the show. Have a super week. You've been listening to the Dr. Zoe show, redefining your superwoman with your host, Dr. Zoe Shaw. Don't forget to sign up for her monthly newsletters to get encouragement, tips, and skills for keeping your mind in the superwoman game. Connect with her now at www.drzoeshaw.com. Tell your friends and subscribe to her podcast on iTunes. Join us next time for another edition of The Dr. Zoe Show.